Okay, in this uh, short supplemental video, I just want to quickly go over the basics of reading in data from a text file. So as we saw in the previous video for writing out data, um, the stream reader that we're going to use to input data is also going to be found in the system.io namespace. So again, we'll have to be sure that that's included. Of course, if you just, like I showed in the previous video, start typing in the stream reader in your program, uh, it'll pop that in there for you. But I've got it here included straight away. Um, so we can just get to the task at hand. Um, so yeah, again, this isn't going to be a full program necessarily. It's just to demonstrate the basics of file input. Um, there are some additional things that I might show you along the way, but you'll want to look to the full lecture video for um, some more information regarding file input and output. So just getting started here then, uh, there are a couple of steps that are required when it comes to inputting text from a data file. Okay, we've got to open the file. So that's going to be the creation of our stream reader. We then potentially need to do a, a priming read. So if the file we're inputting has a header record or something that is different from the remaining records, for example, in the file, we'd want to read that in and then process it. And then we can continue to read in lines from the file until we reach the end of the stream, at which time we should have been done processing the file, and then we can close it and release those resources back um, to the file system. So what I'm gonna do here, since this is a, a brand new project, I've, I've called this lesson 04 file input, is I'm gonna create a text file that we can use um, just to input the, the contents. And I'm gonna create this text file in the project directory. So we'll have to specify the location um, at runtime. We'll just prompt the user for where the file is and, and that'll kind of do away with us having to worry about what a default location would look like. So to create a new text file, I'm just going to go to the file menu in Visual Studio and under the new option, I'm going to select file or control N. That'll bring you to this dialog pop up that says, what kind of file do you want? And we just want to create a text file. So hopefully that's the first option in your list, but if it isn't, just go through and, and have a look. So we're going to click open. Right, and that's going to open a new tab here, text file one. And and all I'm going to do in this file here is I'm just going to type in a couple of, a, a word per line. So this is from a oops, file, okay. And then I'm going to save this. It's going to ask us where and what we would like to call it. Okay, so by default, uh, it's going to just pull up your File Explorer, I'm going to navigate into my file input project directory and I'm going to call this test.txt, same file name we used in the previous one. And then once you've done that, you should see your file show up here um, straight away in your project directory. Okay, so that's perfect. So we've got this text file that we can use. I've got a number of uh, lines in the file so we can read to the end of stream. We can see what that looks like. Um, and now we can go ahead and use that in our program. So again, the first thing we need to do here is to find our stream reader. <clears throat> so I'm gonna call it reader. Again, if you wanted to call it file in or file reader, or whatever you wanna call it, just give it a meaningful name. Um, in this example, it's very short, so I'm just gonna call it reader. We again need to create it as a new object. So we're gonna call the new stream reader constructor. And again, here at this time, this is where we would specify the, the file name. So since we know it's here, we can go to a prompt. I, I know I said we would, but maybe it's better just to show uh, the hard-coded version. So we can navigate to where that file is going to be. So if we go into our oops, project directory, so here it is, file input. Here we go, test, I call, I call the test.txt. Make sure you, you spell it correctly if you want to use it. So I'm going to just rename this. I want this to be test.txt. There we go, fantastic. So let's just select in here. I'm going to copy the path and I'm going to paste that as a string value with a slash t-e-s, oops, t 
T-E-S-T -E dot T-X-T. Again, we saw this in the previous uh, video. Because of the special backslash characters, we haven't escaped those. I'm just going to prefix this string little with the at symbol, and that'll do away or suppress those error warnings. So there's the file that we want to input. And now we can, uh, we don't have a priming read or anything that's necessary here because we just want to read in um, all of the, the lines from the file. And we'll just read them in and output them uh, to the console. Okay, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about variable and scope, variables and scoping here. So basically we can just create a, a loop that tests uh, while the reader, there's an end of stream property um, again. Uh, this is used, it's a Boolean, it's either true or false. And like it says here, it gets a value that indicates whether the stream position is at the end of the stream or not. So we can just continue to read lines in from the file while we have not reached the end of the stream. So a couple of ways you can write this condition. We could say, you know, while the end of stream is false, so we have not reached the end of stream, that, that works out just fine, okay? Um, but because it's a Boolean variable, if you don't want to use the, the comparison operator, we could also just use the not operator, just read it as while not reader end of stream. This has the exact same effect because this turns the false into a true, which would force us into the loop. Whereas end of stream equals false, if that's true, that would also put us into the loop. So uh, either one of those um, options doesn't matter to me. Uh, use the one that you feel more comfortable with. So while we have not reached the end of the stream, and now inside this loop, I just want to capture an individual line from the file. This isn't a line that I'm going to use anywhere else in my program outside here, for example, in the main method that we have. So in this example, it's fine to create a variable that's localized or only available or scoped to the while loop. So I'm going to declare a string line and I'm going to assign it a line from the reader. It turns out, you know, in a moment here, we'll see this, that this is entirely unnecessary, but um, it's fine to make it explicit what we're doing. So I'm going to go to the reader and I'm going to use read line. So again, very similar to the console where we used read line to read in data. We do the exact same here with the stream reader. So we go to the reader, we read an entire line in from the file and we store it in this line variable. And all I'm going to do at this time is do a console write line. I'm going to basically take the data oops, and write it from the file to the console. Okay, and this is why I was saying just a moment ago that this is declaring the line variable is kind of unnecessary. We could have just placed the reader.read line right here where the line variable is, but I wanted to show you that this is possible. So, you know, in this example, I'm just writing the line to the console, but there's no reason why we couldn't inspect this. If this were a record with comma separated values, we could take this line and we could split it up to pull out the different fields. We can do whatever we want once we've read that data in. If we knew that we were reading in numbers, we could parse them. It's no different than if you had console.readline, treat this reader.readline in the same way. You can input whatever data type and however uh, you'd like to do that. So while that's not the end of the stream, we read in a line, we write the line, and then it's going to loop around. And if we haven't reached the end of the stream, we're going to read in another line. This variable line, because I've declared it inside the, lo the loop, is scoped to the loop, which is to say inside this code block, that's where this variable exists. If I exit the, the, the loop here and we try to do something similar, um, let's do it this way. we get an error that pops up here on the variable line and it says, hey, this doesn't exist in the current context. We don't know what line means in the scope of the main method because it wasn't declared out here. Writer, or sorry, reader was declared out here. So we can use that everywhere inside these braces. But because the line variable was declared in this block or in this scope, it only exists inside this code block. We can't access it outside, okay? So we'll talk a little bit more about variables and scoping when we get to methods in a future lesson. But for now, uh, it's important to know how this works. If you wanted to use a local variable for this purpose, uh, that would be fine. But if you need the data outside in the main method, then I would recommend you declare all your variables up here at the top so it's clear and easy to follow um, your logic. Okay, so that's, that's that. The final step then, so we've opened the file. 
we've determined it's not the end of the file. We're going to read some data. We output it. And once we've finished doing that, we've exhausted the contents of the file. It's important again, oops, that we close the file and release those resources. So let's give this a little run here and see what happens. Again, we just give it a moment. And here we can see line by line, our input from the file now written out to the console. Now I've written it out line by line, so we see it in the same way that it was in the file. But of course, we're free to kind of do whatever we want. So if we wanted to instead do write, um, and we wanted to put it all on the same line, we could write the variable and just include a space afterwards. So we can use write, and then when we're finished, we could write a final write line um, to the reader. So we could do something, like, oh no, sorry, uh, to the console just to bump it down. So console write line. So this will write each line with a space or each word with a space out to the console and then a final write line to drop the cursor down. It's not really necessary since we're not doing anything else, but to give you an idea of what that looks like. So again, you can do whatever you want with this variable as you, you know, the, or the data as you read it in from the file, All right? So here we go. Uh, it's entirely up to you what the processing is that takes place with the data you're, that's coming into your program. All we're demonstrating here is a means to say, hey, this is one way to get data in. Okay, I, I do want to take just a few more minutes to cover some uh, advanced stuff here. And that has to do with this idea that reading a file is a little bit different than writing a file in that in order for this to work, the file has to exist. So for example, if, if we try to open a stream reader to a file that didn't exist or wasn't there, that would cause an exception to occur. So we would have to include some try catch exception handling, um, which is always a good uh, practice. I, I didn't include that here and I have not included in the, the output demonstration, but I will include full try catch um, best practices in the lecture, the full file input output lecture video. But that's important to know that this, this could potentially fail. So if, if we were to, let's modify this um, so that again, it's very similar to the previous one example where we're inputting data. So let's, let's say we were going to prompt the user for a path and we we're going to create this based on input from the user. So we might do uh, console dot write and we'll say, you know, enter file, oops, name include full path, something like this. And then we can read in the path. Oops, getting a bit ahead of myself. Okay. Now, when we go to create the reader, at this time, we're going to specify path. If, if the file that we've entered doesn't exist, our program is going to come crashing down. So let's run this quickly. So I'm just going to look for something called test.txt. Now, this is going to look in the default location because I don't uh, have a path here included. And we know that there is no test.txt in that folder. And so our program is, is kind of crashing here. Okay, so you can see it's, it's paused in the debugger. I got a red X. There's an unhandled exception, could not find uh, the file, right? So it, it couldn't find this in that bin debug folder. So that's no good. We don't want programs to crash when users mistakenly type in file names or paths that don't exist. So we could use a try catch around here and recover. Um, and, and that's probably a good practice regardless, but we do have access to another class that we can use to apply, uh, sorry, apply some defensive programming straight away. So rather than just taking this path and using it, we can first uh, use the file class to determine whether or not a file exists. And that will hopefully prevent any file not found exceptions from occurring. So we can specify here as an if statement and the file class again comes from the same system.io namespace. So we can use file and you'll see there's an exists uh, method, okay? It takes in a string path and it does exactly what it sounds like. It determines whether the specified file exists and returns true or false. So we can first ask the question, you know, if there's a file that exists at the path, whatever that was given by the user, 
But then we want to do these things. Okay, so all this should happen in the context of only if the file exists, do we create the, the input stream, read it in and do whatever. And if it doesn't, now we can just display a simple error message to the user. So let's do a right line, oops, and just say something like, uh, oops, the file doesn't exist. Okay. And so without trying and catching, at least for the existence of the file, we can apply some defensive program to make sure we, our program doesn't crash. Now, it's still a good idea, like I said, to uh, apply try and catch on the operation of, of streams, regardless of whether they're input or output. Because if we, if we typed in the name of a file that does exist, but that we don't have permission to read, um, this would still crash because we, we wouldn't, it would try to open the reader and it would crash and say, you don't know the permission level. So it can crash for any number of, of reasons. Um, and as you see here on stream reader, we get a number of exceptions that are, are possible. So argument exception, null, file not found, directory not found, IO exception. So all we're dealing with with the, the file exists is the file not found exception. There are still a number of other exceptions that could happen. So and that's why I mentioned, you still want to do a try catch around this, um, this content. But again, that's for another day. For now, assuming none of those exceptions occur, we assume, you know, good input, good operating conditions. Um, this should be fine. So if we run this again, got a little notifications coming, then we should see, uh, there we go. So running again, test.txt, we now just see the file test.txt doesn't exist. We don't get a crash. The program exits gracefully and, and there's no problem there. So of course we, we do know the files in there. So if we do provide a valid path, we should see that the file is read from and everything looks as it did before. So again, we can just paste this in, include the file name, test.txt, and because it does exist, we're able to open it, read in our content, and then display that to the console. Okay, so that's it for this uh, short little video on file input. Again, I hope you found it useful. I'll see you next time.